example for here and uh, I'm going to show you how to deal with the indeterminate form infinity minus infinity. Uh, now um, if uh, you came here looking for the infinity minus infinity indeterminate form that comes about when you deal with square roots um, then you know I've got your basis covered uh, with what I've written here and so this here shows you what you should do if you get like you know the limit is x goes to infinity of square root of stuff minus square root of stuff, right? In that situation, you might end up with infinity minus infinity as you evaluate the limit. And what you should do is take your given expression of square root of stuff minus square root of stuff and write it with the denominator of one so that that way you can multiply both numerator and denominator by the conjugate of your given expression. And the conjugate, remember, is just changing the sign here in the middle to the opposite. So if it started with a minus, then you change it to a plus and vice versa, which is if it started with a plus, then you'd make this minus and obviously this minus um, because you have to multiply by um, the same uh, the same thing, numerator and denominator. Right. So it has to multiply by one and not change the original expression. Now, after multiplying by the conjugate, then you'll often get a limit. If you don't and you end up with an indeterminate form where you can apply L'Hopital's, then you do that and move forward that way. Now, in our situation, we don't have any square roots, but we do still have the infinity minus infinity situation because if we uh, evaluated uh, at x equals 0, right, if we evaluated the limit, then we'd get 1 over 0 minus 1 over 0, which is... Um, equivalent to infinity minus infinity, right? So uh, we know that uh, we can use L'Hopital's rule uh, by first uh, getting common denominators and creating a slightly different indeterminate form from this infinity minus infinity. You'll see what I mean. So if you just got common denominators, which is fairly straightforward, then you can write limit as x goes to zero. Uh, denominators quickly would say x minus sine x you should know how to get common denominators for rational expressions. So I'm not going to show you that more carefully. But yeah, you'd get this, right? And if you uh, evaluate at 0, you're going to get 0 minus 0 divided by 0 times 0. And so that, that's going to say 0 over 0. So yeah, uh, the 0 over 0 indeterminate form where you know how to apply L'Hopital. So that's what we're going to do. Um, so then we're going to say that our given limit is the same as limit is x goes to 0 of derivative of numerator is going to say uh, 1 minus cos x, right? And then derivative of the denominator is going to require that we use the product rule. And I'll do that uh, quickly. Uh, but I do want to use the division sign so that we can write neater. Uh, yeah. So the derivative of this denominator uh, by product rule is going to say uh, sine x and then plus x cos x, right? And so if we evaluate at 0, we're going to get 1 minus uh, 1, cosine of 0 is 1, divided by sine of 0 is 0, plus this x here is 0. So it doesn't matter what we multiply by. It's going to be 0. So yet again, we get 0 over 0. So what do we do? L'Hopital's again. Uno mas, all right? And I say uno mas because I have had to re-record this video to make it better. And uh, I know it's going to end in the next step. But yeah, if it didn't, you just keep doing it again. Um, all right, so this is going to say uh, limit is x goes to 0. And then derivative of that numerator is going to be derivative of the constant is 0 minus derivative of cosine is negative sine. So minus negative sine is just going to say sine x, right? And then uh, here, well, I'm going to need a lot more horizontal line for my division sign than that. Um, and then in the denominator, the derivative of this guy uh, is going to be, this is going to turn into cosine, clearly. Um, and this part is going to require product rule again. And so doing that quickly, I'm going to have to write plus cos x plus, um, and then it's x times negative sine x. So it's not really plus, it's um, minus x sine x. Yeah? Okay, cool. And now if we evaluate the limit, it, um, as x goes to 0, um, in other words, plug in 0 in the rational expression here, then we're going to get, uh, let's see, we're going to get in the numerator, we're going to get sine of 0, which is 0. And then in the denominator, we're going to get cosine of 0, cosine of 0. Cosine of 0 is 1, so 1 plus 1 makes 2. And then it's going to be minus 
uh, and then this x again is going to make this whole thing zero, so minus zero. Uh, and so that's going to say two divided by zero. Well, sorry, reversed it at a crucial step. It's going to say zero divided by two, which is going to be zero. So our limit here is zero. Yeah? Cool. Keep watching, and there'll be a few more interesting examples to come. Take care.